in our previous lesson we learnt about the meaning of minerals so minerals are naturally occurring in organic solids found on the earth's crust right however minerals can be divided under two broad headings metallic minerals and non metallic minerals so minerals can be divided as metallic or non metallic some very common examples of metallic minerals are iron ore copper gold uranium and bauxite on the other hand some common examples of non metallic minerals could be sulfur potash nitrate mica and gypsum now to understand the difference between metallic and non metallic mineral let us look at some characteristics some significant characteristics of each of these mineral type before we proceed with our lesson could you help me answer this question which of the following minerals is a metallic one is it gold or sulfur or gypsum or mica the correct answer is gold gold is a metallic mineral while others are non metallic minerals so now let us start a discussion on the characteristics of the two types of minerals metallic minerals and non metallic minerals the very first point of difference is the ductility now what do we mean by ductility when any substance can be stretched or pounded into sheets and wires respectively they are said to be ductile in nature so metallic minerals are those which are ductile in nature for example the copper wires now copper as we know is a mineral however copper can be stretched and it can be turned into a wire so copper wire is a common example which tells us that metallic minerals are ductile in nature on the other hand non metallic minerals are brittle and non ductile for example chalk now chalk is a form of limestone limestone contains carbonates of calcium right however chalk cannot be rolled or stretched in doing so it will break very easily which only means that these are brittle non metallic minerals are brittle and are non ductile in nature the second point of difference tells us that by melting process metals can be obtained from metallic minerals which only means that if we have to extract gold or iron from their respective metals we can simply put it to melting right so if we melt the ores of these two minerals then we can obtain the metal in pure form from these metallic minerals on the other hand we cannot do the same with non metallic minerals right so non metallic minerals on burning or melting cannot give us any new product or more specifically it cannot yield any metal the third point of difference tells us that these are malleable who the metallic minerals so the metallic minerals are malleable which only means that they can be pounded into thin sheets and can be used for various purposes the most common example of which is the aluminium foil so if aluminium is rolled over and over again for a long period of time it can be converted or pounded into thin sheets and these aluminium foils are generally used on a daily basis to keep our food warm on the other hand we cannot do the same with the non metallic minerals they are non malleable in nature they cannot be pounded as i've already mentioned they are brittle and non ductile they are also non malleable so they cannot be transformed or converted into any other shape they cannot be given a shape they will break coming to the fourth point of difference which tells us that the metallic minerals are good conductors of heat and electricity again going back to the example of copper wires now why do we use copper wires so widely when it comes to household wiring or electrical wiring of the household 
simply because copper is a metallic mineral and it is a good conductor of heat and electricity. So, metallic minerals are good conductors of heat and electricity. On the other hand, non-metallic minerals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. This is why mica tape is used for electrical purposes because it is a poor conductor of heat and electricity and it acts as a good insulator and also protects from any sort of fire. So we just pointed out the difference between metallic minerals and non-metallic minerals by looking at the characteristics of each of them. Now, metallic minerals again can be further subdivided into ferrous and non-ferrous. Now let us understand how ferrous metallic minerals are different from non-ferrous metallic minerals. Now ferrous, let me tell you, is the scientific name of iron. So this simply means that these minerals or the ferrous metallic minerals are rich in iron. On the other hand, the non-ferrous metallic minerals are not rich in any iron or they do not contain any iron simply. The second point of difference tells us that the ferrous minerals are magnetic in nature. Now, due to the presence of iron which is a metal, they have got their magnetic property. Right? So, ferrous metallic minerals are magnetic in nature. However, non-ferrous metallic minerals are non-magnetic or have no magnetic properties due to the absence of iron. So, they have no magnetic properties. The third point of difference here is that the ferrous metallic minerals due to the presence of iron which is a heavy metal weigh more. So the ferrous metallic minerals weigh more as compared to the non-ferrous metallic minerals. Non-ferrous metallic minerals do not have any iron. So due to the absence of iron which is a heavy metal, these are generally low in weight. So they weigh less. The fourth point of difference is that ferrous metallic minerals are less resistant to corrosion. While on the other hand, the non-ferrous metallic minerals are more resistant to corrosion. This is again mainly due to the presence of iron that these are less resistant to corrosion. That is, they are more exposed or more vulnerable to corrosion. On the other hand, non-ferrous metallic minerals have no iron present in them. Therefore, they are more resistant to corrosion. That is, they are less exposed or less vulnerable to corrosion. Now, common examples of ferrous metallic minerals can be manganese and iron, which means that these showcase all these properties. Being magnetic in nature, contains iron in them and also are less resistant to corrosion. On the other hand, as examples of non-ferrous metallic minerals, we have gold, copper and zinc which show all these properties of non-ferrous metallic minerals which are that they do not contain any iron, they are more resistant to corrosion, they weigh less and they do not show any magnetic property. So here are pictures of some of the examples of ferrous metallic minerals. These are iron, bauxite and manganese. So all these weigh more as compared to the non-ferrous metallic minerals. All of these show magnetic properties and they also are less resistant to corrosion. On the other hand, some common examples of non-ferrous metallic minerals are copper and uranium. Now copper and uranium are those which show no magnetic properties, do not have any iron, weigh less and are more resistant to corrosion. This is why copper wires are very commonly used in the electrical wiring of any place. So we learnt that metallic minerals can be either ferrous metallic minerals or non-ferrous metallic minerals depending on the characteristics or properties it holds. However, there is another category of metallic minerals and these are precious metallic minerals. 
So precious metallic minerals are those metallic minerals which have a high economic value and are widely used across the world. Some very common precious metallic minerals are gold, silver and platinum. Now let us take examples of non-metallic minerals. So some common examples of non-metallic minerals are sulfur and mica. So these were some common examples of non-metallic minerals. So far we were able to understand that minerals can be divided under two broad headings, metallic minerals and non-metallic minerals, where metallic minerals can be further subdivided as ferrous metallic minerals and non-ferrous metallic minerals. Common examples of ferrous metallic minerals is manganese and non-ferrous metallic minerals is copper. On the other hand, a common example of non-metallic minerals is mica. So we read about so many minerals. Minerals, as I've already mentioned, are naturally occurring inorganic substances found in the Earth's crust. However, there are certain minerals that are organically formed. That is, they are formed through various geological processes and are organic in nature. So, if we have to define organic minerals, we can say that over millions of years, heat, pressure, and geological processes have transformed the degraded plants and animals into fossil fuels or organic minerals. So in our previous lessons on weathering and soil formation, we learned about the different types of rocks, where we learned that sedimentary rock, which is a type of rock, is formed when degraded or dead plants and animals get carried away by natural forces like wind and water and get deposited at the seabed layer after layer. And over millions of years, due to heat and pressure, they get converted into sedimentary rocks where we find the fossils of these dead plants and animals. Now, these fossils can be used as fuels. Some common fuels or some common organic minerals are coal, petroleum, and natural gas. Now these are also known as conventional energy resources because they have a variety of purposes and they are important energy resources. So we learned that organic minerals are those which have been formed due to continuous heat and pressure that have transformed the degraded plants and animals into fossil fuels. Now coal is an organic mineral or a fossil fuel is used for the generation of electricity. Coal is also used as a fuel in many industries, for example, the iron and steel industry. Petroleum is another important organic mineral and petroleum-based fuels like diesel and petrol are commonly used as vehicular fuels, right? So petroleum-based fuels are used in vehicles. Natural gas is another organic mineral which is widely used or commonly used as a cooking gas in almost every household. So natural gas is used commonly as a cooking gas in almost every household. So we see that these organic minerals are important energy resources and are widely used for various purposes. In this lesson, we were able to understand the different types of minerals and we saw how minerals can be divided under different categories on the basis of the properties that they hold. So in our next lesson, we'll be learning or exploring more about minerals. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads.
So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.